What's going on guys? Chuck back with another awesome Blu-ray purchase. Only this time it's a little bit different. This time it's a little after dark. And what does that mean exactly? Well, this is a case where the this particular title and possibly titles in the future under this uh, after dark label are going to be more on the adult side, if you will. Um, and the reason why it is, it's branching out a little bit, and also because I just picked up something uh, from Vinegar Syndrome, who I think uh, is probably before they you know, ventured out on a lot of these exploitation films and cult films and whatnot, one of their biggest, um, I guess, uh, product, if you will, uh, were putting out adult films on, uh, at the time, DVD and then eventually Blu-ray under their Picarama title or label. Um, and so much so to the point that they've started releasing some of these on 4K, which is like, wow. <laughs> you never would think to get, you know, any kind of adult film in uh, 4K. Um, but kudos to Vinegar Syndrome because, you know, these aren't just your typical... I mean, you can get a lot of adult fare on, online in 4K, you know, obviously. But we're talking, what Vinegar Syndrome is dealing with, or deals with, are um, films primarily from the golden age of porn, if you will. You had a lot of um, great titles. I mean, I've, it's no secret. Like I've said before, I love, my, I love my smut, my sleaze. All that I'm a big uh, lover connoisseur of the adult cinema. Uh, I've been for a long, long time. Um, I was I grew up during the '80s, you know, the VCR um, and the video rental, all that stuff. Uh, so kind of right at the tail end of the golden age um, when you had a lot of these films were just that they were films, and that's. What I really like about what Vinegar Syndrome is doing is that they're collecting a lot of these long forgotten um, films. And let's be honest, that's what they are. They really are. They are films. You know, a lot of people will not know whether it's porn or anything. And in some cases, that's probably true. I mean, it's a lot. The, the adult film, can, I can, it's not even the same thing. You can't compare it. It's, they're apples and oranges almost. I mean, the content is somewhat the same. But the presentation is totally different from what it was late 70s to the mid 80s, as opposed to modern internet age, where it's all, you know, now it's, you know, I mean, Tom, Dick, and Harry can go out and film whatever, um, good or bad. I mean, you've got, obviously, you've got big production companies, uh, studios filming high quality um, stuff, but it's basically, it's, it's, it's almost like it, it's a premise you know, um, a setup and punchlines like Doug Orb, you know, money shot. <laughs> and, and, and 20, 30 minutes scene. That's basically things filmed on a scene. It's all about scenes. Uh, mostly because, you know, again, the, the the society we have, the, um, how do you want to call it? The, the mentality is basically get it quick and, and just everyone wants instant gratification. So to speak. So I think you know, 20 minutes, 30, 30 minutes. Yeah, that's what you have now. Rewind that all the way back to the late 70s into the mid 80s, and adult cinema was just that. It was film. These are movies that were shot on film, and you had performers who were legitimate actors. Um, a lot of them, you know, were actors just trying to find work, and you know, these films were there and. They gave him a chance to do their craft, and then just, hey, they just happen to have sex on screen, too. And that's the difference between, you know, those movies of that era where, you, like I said, there were films that just you know, had a story, they had a plot, you know, they tried to have character best they could. Some worked, some didn't, and they just happened to have, you know, sex scenes throughout, which is no different than if you've seen a lot of uh, foreign films mainstream films are a lot this way but because of the united states and their you know 
um, prudishness, if you will, <laughs> uh, to this kind of thing. It's it's very you know very closeted when it comes to sexuality. You know, everyone in the country is a pervert, but no one wants to admit it. We're over in Europe, no one cares. They're all free. <laughs> Uh, so you have a lot of these mainstream films that are you know, like that, and it's okay. Um, and now it's it's very hard. I mean, uh, you 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 you. I guess there's some borders or boundaries are kind of crossing, or you know they're, they're right on that tip. You have the NC-17, or some things you're kind of you can almost get away with. But again, at the time, these were just films done by legitimate directors or who, people who wanted to be in film but couldn't get whatever, you know, and, and actors who were, you know, working in theater, trying to get a gig, and this is what happened. And I mean, some of them probably didn't want this to be their career, and it being their career, and they, they, most of you got such fantastic um, performers that came out of that era. That era. You know, people like uh, uh, Paul Thomas, um, Eric Edwards, you know, uh, uh, um, let see. Georgina Spelvin, Kay Parker, um, Samantha Fox, I mean, to name a few, there's plenty more. Uh, the list can go on and on. Harry Reams. But the others, it's, you know, you had the films like, you know, Deep Throat, which was, became uh, porn chic, if you will. Everyone was seeing Deep Throat. It was the film to see. It was, you know, they were playing in, in legit, you know, well, legit theaters, but they were playing in theaters. and. It was kind of cool, you know. A lot of celebrities were all about Deep Throat, the movie. <laughs> um, so, that being said, let you know, bring up to back to the, uh, up to speed with what I picked up from Vinegar Syndrome. Um, and again, I don't, I haven't really uh, delved too much into their Picarama titles. I do have a few I, I got years ago, um, and that is um, the Taboo Trilogy, because I, I really enjoy that whole series of films, and I'm, I'm a big Kay Parker fan. Um, and that that's a very good uh, trilogy. And they put them on Blu-ray and DVD combos, which were fantastic. And then uh, besides those, I picked up uh, Gerard Damiano's Throat 12 Years After, which is kind of his... A follow-up to his film Deep Throat. Um, not really a sequel because it really has nothing to do with any. It's just that film. It's basically almost like little vignettes, but involving different couples in their amorous lives and how they enter. It's it's really hard. And, that, and there's a case where you know I'm not sure there's really a necessary plot to that film. Um, but it was, I got it because it's sentimental in a lot of ways. It's one of the earliest adult films I ever saw. Between that and uh, Sharon Mitchell, her seeing that film was like, it, it, that's the one thing I always remembered. And you've got, you know, you got, uh, in that film you have Sharon Mitchell, Sharon Kane, Jerry Butler, uh, Joey Silvera. Um, oh, I forget. There's another actor, I can't think of his name right now. Who was in that? It's very uh, famous or in those films at the time, and I'll probably put it right here somewhere. Um, but you know, the Sharon Mitchell scene from that, for some reason, is what I always remember from that. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. But <laughs> like I said, I've been recently noted that the Vinegar Syndrome had releasing some of these adult films um, in collect nice collector sets with slipcovers and in 4K, and they recently put out one that I was like, huh. I might actually have to pick that one up. Um, I wasn't sure. I kind of hem and hawed about it. It's like, you know what? Why not? And that film is Stiff Competition. Um, great title. <laughs> this is actually one I remember renting years and years ago. Uh, this is like 1984. So it is a shot on film. So it's kind of like one of the... It's right at that stage when... The ad adult films are transitioning from being films over to video. Uh, when video is a about to just basically take over the adult film industry. Which is something that's, you know, talked about really well in the film Boogie Nights. I think uh, you kind of get that um, 
aspect of how it's explained. But this is, you know, right on the cusp of that. Um, I don't know if it was actually released in theaters or not, but I know it was shot on film. Like I said, I, I remember seeing the, the VHS and renting it. Um, and this is actually a fun little movie. Um, it's obviously kind of a knockoff of like a Rocky, any kind of sports films um, in so many ways. But you've got a great cast in this film. Uh, let me check my notes here, make sure I have everybody. Um, let's starting with Gina Carrera, who would be this character right here. You know, close up to that. It's, it's fairly tame, we're okay. Gina Carrera, as uh, Tammy the Tongue, <laughs> okay, first of all, stiff commentaries. Let me, let me break this down. And this is what's absolutely crazy about this film. Um, it plays on, if you see the robes here, this is like, again, it's playing like on a boxing spoof. In this case, it's a. I'm trying to be delicate here. It's an oral competition for these women. Um, and they're competing in a big contest called the. I want to say it's a great suck off <laughs> um, for a huge uh, a, a amount of prize, like $50,000, I think it was, or something along, along those lines. Uh, so, you know, each one of these ladies has, you know, kind of a in-ring personality, nickname, very similar to boxing or wrestling. Um, you've got, you know, some sleazy managers, a uh, big show promoter, um, and what's the hilarity is this is all played straight. You know, everyone acts like this is a huge mainstream sporting event. It's showing on TV and bars. Everybody's watching. You're betting on it. Uh, there's, <laughs> they're following these the, the competitors, and, and the, there's news, there's scenes where a newspaper, you know, the classic newspaper, spinning headlines, and you know, as if this was going to be front page news of what these people, these girls are doing in their competition. Um, like I said you've got a scene where you know whether the the the, the big event is taking place in Vegas. It's airing on television. God knows how that's possible. Uh, but you cut to a scene of like three old ladies watching this and rooting for it. And it's freaking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> um, and then you've also got the great montage scene. So uh, let's back up. So the premise besides that is that you've got... Um, Basically, Kevin James, um, who I am only familiar with from seeing him in, in Taboo 2 um, as the, the, the main uh, male character, male lead in Taboo 2. Uh, but he's basically playing Jeff. They never give him a last name, just Jeff. But he's like, you know, kind of a, a promoter and he's in the, in, in the, the, the whole business. And his, his, uh, his talent is walked out on him. All we know is her name's The Mouth. And she walks out on him, and he's stuck, nowhere to go. And then in comes Gina Carrera's character, who is eventually be named Tammy the Tongue. She steps in and decides to help Jeff, and Jeff realizes she's got talent. <laughs> and they're going to go into this competition, and you know she's not doing it for the money; she's doing it for the fun. Uh, and they had this great training montage, which. You know, with the upbeat music and then the tongue exercises, he's explaining. It. I don't want to get too much into it because this is YouTube, um, but it's hilarious. And again, it's 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 this the absurdity of this whole thing and how straight it's played is fantastic, and it, it really sells it. And it's it's good. And again, this is. I think it it's played straight, but it's um, tongue in cheek. I think it's not taking itself too seriously, and it's you know there's comedy in it, but they're also again to, to steal a Richard Donner word, good verisimilitude. And they're playing it, you know, it's 100 percent real. This is all big, big, no matter how absurd it is, it's straight, and it works. You know, you believe the absurdity of that this oral sex competition is going to air on television, and you can bet on it and whatnot. Sure. <laughs> so again, we have Gina Carrera as your Tammy the Tongue. Um, now her big rival in this film is played by Cindy Summers, this character portrayed here, um, who was actually coming out of uh, a short retirement, from what I understand, to come back and, and, and do this film. And she's playing Cynthia Silkthroat. 
and which is a character who also went into retirement. She was like the greatest, you know, the best of all time. Went into retirement, now she's trying to make a comeback. And she is basically worried about the competition from Tammy the Tongue. Um, and with along with uh, Cynthia is her manager lover, uh, Jake the Snake, played by the great uh, John Leslie, uh, who is always just a knacking toward a force. He is so good. He's, he is like one of those um, top stars during this era. Um, and he's a fantastic actor. He, you know, we can be in comedy, very intense and drama, very good. And uh, a lot of, you know, performers at the time, women really enjoyed them. Actually, I mean, there's an audio interview with Jeanette Carrera. She about she really uh, had a huge crush on John Leslie. He was one of the sexiest men she'd ever met. Um, so that's, you know, really cool. And it, it plays very well. And he said he's got great charisma. He always has. Um, so also in this competition is... Bridget Monet playing Linda Lone Star, and I believe, yeah, she's this, this character right here. She's kind of a country western. Uh, she wears, you know, assless chaps, <laughs> which is just great. Um, and her manager is played by another uh, big male uh, heavy hitter, male star heavy hitter, and that is uh, Herschel Savage uh, as Wayne. And, you know, he, another great guy who's a good actor, um, always give a tour de force performance. Um, actually, this thing is loaded with great um, performers. Um, and of course, let's see, there was also another, you know, I don't think she's, uh, oh, here she is. This uh, Patty Plenty. Actually, excuse me, I'm sorry. Patty Plenty is managed by Herschel Savage's character because um, Linda Lone Star is actually managed by, make sure I get the name here, David Cannon Buck, who I think was actually her real life uh, boyfriend, husband at the time, so she's only doing scenes with him. Um, so she's not really much to do except for a, a one big scene with him. But uh, yeah, um, get the names here again because there's so many. Patty Plenty, Patty, where'd she go? Patty Plenty, right here. Yeah, she uh, is married or married, managed by the Herschel Savage character. And there's this, you know, he's basically kind of sneak his way into this competition. I'm not even sure how this competition works because they make it sound like it's a big tournament. Only, there's only the four performers at the, the, the finals. So all you're looking to see is the finals. Um, and all the, uh, I don't know, back, uh, back room, back alley, you know, uh, low indie circuit, <laughs> I guess. Um, uh, but there's a scene where Herschel Savage and... Um, Again, we get her name, uh, Patty Cakes, played by Patty Plant. She's playing Patty Cakes is her name. Uh, go to see the promoter of this whole shindig. That promoter being none other than Don Head. Very subtle. Played by Ron Jeremy. Um, that is, you know, again, it's probably, you know, peak Ron Jeremy was slim and, and, and trim. Um, not the unfortunate... Ah, uh, Ron Jeremy, we know about who's got legal troubles today, but this is the your kinder, friendlier Ron Jeremy, or so we think, thought. <laughs> Anyways, so there's the, you know, Herschel Savage is basically trying to, you know, coerce him to get Patty Case into this competition to make sure she can, you know, that uh, she can compete against Cynthia Soakthroat. But by the way, let me point out, Cindy Summers, as Cynthia Soakthroat, to me, was probably the most... A, uh, attractive woman uh, of the main four. And again, there she is right there in the little bondage of it. But it's that, that glowing, that flowing red hair. Um, I am kind of a sucker for redheads, and she was really good. Um, but also in this film, also in this film, um, you've got Kid Natividad, Natividad, uh, who's well known for being a, a Russ Meyer girl. You know, she's a very well endowed woman. I uh, did a lot of his films. She has a, a cameo part in this, and actually, um, with Gina, a scene with Gina Carrera. And uh, one of the bonus features on this Blu-ray is a nice, uh, candid interview with uh, Kitten, which blew my mind, as I honestly wasn't sure that she was uh, still with us, um, apparently. 
she is. Uh, she was, and she, you know, it was nice to see her, obviously, you know. Um, she was very candid about, you know, her career and um, what she'd went through. Um, and a little bit, actually, it, it's funny, she mentioned she'd never seen this film, actually. She enjoyed doing it, she was all about it, but for whatever reason, she never saw the, saw the film. So I'm hoping that when their syndrome interviewer, they actually let her see the film. Um, excuse me. Um, also on this, the other special feature they have here is a what they call a feature-length audio um, interview with Gina Carrera. And it's not really an audio commentary. Um, it's just, an, just what it is, it's an audio interview, but they play it over the film. And I got into about maybe... Uh, half hour, 45 minutes into the comment, uh, the, the interview, and it's actually very informative. Uh, it was very interesting. Basically, you know, talking from the beginning, of her starting out doing the, you know, sorry, mo nude modeling, and then going into the, you know, what was known as the loops. Uh, this is actually her first feature. She, uh, from what I understand, was might have been seeing the director, uh, and so she this kind of got her in the door. But it was just interesting hearing her stories and, you know, her thoughts, all positive, uh, about the industry at the time and making this film in particular. And again, I only got about 45 minutes into it, but it was very informative. I'll have to go back and listen to the rest of that. Um, and listen, you've got so many big names. You know, it's like, let me run again. you got Gina Carrera, Cindy Summers, Patty, uh, Patty Plenty, Bridget Monet, um, Kevin James, Herschel Savage, um, Ron Jeremy, Paul Thomas, who was a great performer at the time, has a non-sexual role. He's just basically the the commentator, um, really hamming it up and over-dramatizing everything, but it's very, very funny. Um, you've got look, Jack Baker, uh, who was, you know, he's one of those you know, character actors, you'd know him if you saw him. Um, he's done a lot of stuff. He was, uh, but he pops up in the in the crowd, along with Star Barrington, who was uh, or Barrington, who was you know kind of a bit character. Uh, very young Tom Byron shows up as one of the studs, if you will, um, for the, <laughs> the competition. Um, so big young baby face Tom Byron before you know this is the '84 before he became the big star that he was. Uh, also on that was Peter North, um, which he was play one of these studs in, during the finals, and he was with um, Gina Carrera. So right there, you knew who was going to win, because you're not going to put Pierre North on screen and not let him finish. <laughs> um, who else? We had a, uh, oh my goodness, there's a couple other big names I, or I can think of here that had, um, where is Tom Byron mentioned? Steve Drake, another, you know, one of the studs. He became, you know, a well-known star. Susan Hart, um, who played the mouth. She was uncredited. William Margold, who was well-known uh, in the industry. I don't think it, for, I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure what it was he actually, but I did a lot of writing on, um, and um, I don't know if he was in an agency or anything like that, but I, I know William Margold. I've seen him before. I know he wrote a lot of stuff on the you know, industry, industry, but he plays a quick cameo as a bookie. Again, they're, they're betting on this. It's fantastic. But um, this was, again, so much fun. This movie is so much fun. Um, it doesn't take itself too seriously, which a lot of these films are at their best when they do, because you especially realize the absurdity of what the topic uh, uh, is. Um, so... Again, there's the slip cover. Here's the back. I think we're decent here. Talking about the suck, suck off with the fifty thousand uh, dollar prize, cash prize, and cover. This one may be a little bit risky, but she's got clothes on. So this is the this is the VHS cover I remember right here. And here's your back. Nothing loot on the back there, so I can show that off to you. And your discs are basically the same uh, uh, cover art as the slip cover and the actual other cover. 
So you've got your 4K and your Blu-ray, which again, who would have thought that you get films like these on 4K, Blu-ray, let alone 4K, you know? Uh, so kudos to Vinegar Syndrome for really preserving uh, these types of films. Um, and they've got a uh, kind of after picking this up, I, I went through their their Picarama titles and realized there's some couple classics in there that you know I feel like I should probably pick up a gnome, and I probably will. <laughs> um, again, I really enjoyed the golden age of adult film, and I'm gonna call it that. I mean, golden age porn, but I'm gonna refer to it as adult film because that's what it was. Again, I, I said this earlier, but it was. Film, you know, filmmakers making movies that just happened to have sex. Um, it didn't carry the movie along. It wasn't, you know, you could took it out and just show them. And a lot of times these happen. I mean, I would see like softcore versions of these films, you know, uh, distributed on videotape or on cable sometimes. Um, and you've got, it just, it was such a different time. I mean, it probably wasn't. The industry now, I'm sure, is probably a lot better in terms of what it can do for performances than it was then. Obviously, you know, in the early days, you had the, you know, very mob controlled. It wasn't exactly the best of circumstances as opposed to now where I think it's more healthier, safer. Um, just people are taking care of a little bit better. Maybe not 100%. I mean, I'm not in the industry. I just go from the things I've seen performers um, say and how they respond. But it's a different time. That the, the the aesthetic is much different than um, obviously you know just the, the kind of people are just different. You know, it's, they're not so all, all all pretty people. They're more realistic everyday people. I mean, there's some beautiful women, there's some good looking guys, but then you have a couple of guys that are like, me. <laughs> you know, as opposed to now with a lot of these guys are just chipped from granite and it's just like, eh. and the women are just like, wow, you know, but, and, and they, again, it's not been wrong with that. I and mean, this time's changed, it's how it is. But, you know, again, that time is, Uh, it's very hard to explain, and you know, some people may think I'm really waxing nostalgic on this way too much. It's more or less people say it's porn. True, but it, just because it's porn doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it can't be done well, and it, it was, and it's sometimes it still is. And but then was just again, there's a reason why it's called the golden age. Um, there was so much good uh, quality filmmaking then um, that is just, it's lost. It, like so many things, it's become a lost art. I'm glad that Vinegar Syndrome is doing their best to preserve these types of uh, films. Um, and not all of them, they're preserving her. You know, some of them, they're actually, I think, preserving a couple of these, uh, these quick loops too. <laughs> um, but I mean, there's a couple of films they've, I saw they had um, like Sex World was one, that Debbie Does Dallas 2, which I have not seen, I've seen the first one. I never saw it too. Um, the Pretty Peaches trilogy, which is one of the famous one. There's uh, a couple other ones that I know that I see the titles like, oh yeah, I've heard of that one. I should, you know, I really like to check that one out. Um, and there's some you look at, you know, I've never heard it, but it, it, you read the uh, read description on those. Oh, this guy sounds interesting. You might check it in the, the list of actors in there. Wow, these are such great actors. I know these people, the performers are, you know, one, actually, you know, I'm going to call them performers. They were actors for the most part. You know, these people were trying their best, except they were, they were in a situation where they were just, they were actors doing a job, and they were doing the best of their ability. In most cases, they nailed it. Um... So yeah, I've I full disclosure, I did pick up a few a few more. Um, so maybe you know it'll be another after dark later on or something else. Who knows? Uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, I know this is kind of a little a little bit risky. I try to keep it as um, tame as possible. I know this is a very very naughty subject, 
and it's kind of hard to tiptoe around certain aspects of it. But I do want to keep it semi-clean. And again, this isn't about the naughtiness of the sack so much as it's about the idea of the film and just what, you know, what I think, you know, it, it, it's good merits are, you know, how good this particular film was in this particular genre, you know, uh, this era, if you will. But, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I'm I'm just I really enjoy that 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 time. It takes you back. It's a very nostalgic trip, and and it's good to see these again. So I can swear I'm long on. I probably already have for 30 minutes. So if you get a chance, check out Stiff Competition. You know, it's it's fun. It really is. And like I said, it's. If it, it, it's a, a sex spoof of Rocky you never knew you needed. Um, so much so, like I said, this was 1984 when this came out, so like two years after Rocky three, and you've even got a scene in here with the whole, I'm going to mess you up, go for it. <laughs> it's verbatim, it's great. Um, but it's it's fun. Oh, and another great thing about this, which is cool, there's a blooper reel at the end credits. It's like a Halloween movie. <laughs> There's bloopers playing, which is fantastic because you never see that. You know, I mean, it's not like sex bloopers. It's basically the acting bloopers and you're missing your lines like any other film. And it's, oh my God, it was so cool. I've, you know, you never see stuff like that in, in you know, adult film. And it was so cool to see these, you know, these people just crack up and, you know, miss their lines or miss their mark or whatever. And just having fun. Just like you would on an air film set. So that's a really neat touch. And I really wish that that happened more often. You know, and maybe there are, I don't know. But this is the first time I'd ever seen it on uh, in any uh, adult film. And it was a really nice touch. So kudos to them for doing that. So if you haven't, like I said, check out Steam Competition. A lot of fun. You know, if you're into this kind of thing, this is what you pick up and enjoy it very much. I think you will. So... That is it for this Blu-ray purchase after dark. Um, if you enjoyed this, click the thumbs up, share, subscribe, let me know your thoughts. Um, tell me what you think of this whole concept of the darker side, a little naughty, a little after, after dark action. <laughs> is it something you know, you'd be interested in, you know, hear my thoughts on anything else or could you care less? Or does it even matter? I don't know. Or just say, hey. Because you know I'll always take hey too. Or hi. Hey hi. Hey hi ho. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. Uh, until next time, this is Chuck. And I will see you on the other side. <laughs>